Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. I'm Brian McDaniel, and I will be your guide on this journey through a list of the highest yield inflammation and immunology topics for the USMLE Step 1 Medical Board exam. I've already made 10 videos that go through these topics in detail. This video is just going to act as an introduction that lets you know which topics are most and least important for the exam. Now, if I had to guess, I would say based on my calculations that you'd get roughly 20 uh, questions on the actual exam from inflammation and immunology. So that makes it the highest yield chapter that I've covered so far. Uh, certainly there are gonna be sections in like the organ systems that are going to be more important, but this is probably the highest yield general topic type chapter. So we will just start with the highest yield topics and work our way down and I'll try to give you a few key tips for each one. So we'll start with the highest yield topic, which is B and T cell activation. You want to know about the different MHCs. You want to know about uh, the types of immunologic cells involved, as well as the specific scenarios where different cell types will be predominant. You want to know how these cells interact. Next up, we got toxoid vaccines. Uh, you just want to know the general definition. You want to know how the toxoids are highly immunogenic and can be bound to carbohydrates to increase the immune response. And you want to know some common examples like tetanus and diphtheria. Uh, also with a high yield ring of nine, we've got antibody isotypes. So you want to know the different subtypes of antibody and in what situations you see the most, how the mix of isotypes changes during the shift from acute to chronic inflammation, uh, whether or not the different isotypes can cross the placenta. And you should focus primarily on IgG and IgM as most of the questions will come from there, but you should know the other ones as well. The high yield rating of eight, we've got type one hypersensitivity. We want to know about the relationship to histamine and IgE. We want to know about anaphylaxis and using EpiPens, other types of atopic reactions like allergic rhinitis and atopic dermatitis. High yield rating of seven, we've got tumor necrosis factor. What's important is how it's related to shock. And you may also want to look at how uh, some of the TNF inhibitors can be used as a treatment for things like rheumatoid arthritis. Also with the high yield rating of seven is interferon. You wanna know how it's related to granulomas as well as intracellular infections like TB. Chronic granulomas disease, you need to know its way of being inherited, so X-linked recessive. Also how it's a defect in NADPH oxidase which leads to low free radicals that inhibit the action of the phagosomes. You need to know the relationship with granulomas and how it makes people susceptible to catalase positive organisms. The high yield rating of six, we've got some of the signals for acute inflammation, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and bradykinin. You wanna know the role of these inflammations play in inflammation, a uh, basic understanding of some of the pathways and enzymes involved in creating them, uh, how some medications like NSAIDs or corticosteroids can inhibit their inflammation and be a painkiller, and a little bit about how uh, leukotriene antagonists can be used in asthma. Chronic organ transplant rejection also is going to get a high yield rating of six. So you want to focus on the time course of the presentation. That's the most important thing for differentiating between the different types of rejection. And also know that chronic rejection can present with things like graft arthrosclerosis. Now we're getting the medium yield topics. So with a high yield rating of five, we've got type four hypersensitivity. You wanna know how it's a delayed response and it's T cell mediated. The most commonly tested scenario is contact dermatitis so you want to understand that clinical picture, but you may also see questions on things like a PPD TB test or MS. Type three hypersensitivity. So you want to know what immune complexes are and how they can damage tissues in diseases like lupus. Scar formation. So you want to know a little bit about myofibroblasts, know what a keloid is, 
and know how scars can form in the CNS through gliosis. Interleukin-2 or IL-2, you need to know its role in the proliferation of T cells and how some immunosuppressants inhibit IL-2. DeGeorge syndrome, you need to know some of those buzzwords like third and fourth pharyngeal pouches, absence of thymus, and the resulting absence of T cells, and what infections this makes people susceptible to. Other buzzword would be absence of the parathyroid or the resulting hypocalcemia. Associations such as truncus arteriosus and facial abnormalities sometimes also show up on questions. Live attenuated vaccines get to four. Know the basic definition, the type of immunity these vaccines elicit, and then also diseases that are commonly prevented with this type of vaccine. Graft versus host disease, how it is a donor white blood cells attacking the recipient, be able to identify the clinical picture, uh, most often being in somebody with a bone marrow transplant. So that's a buzzword that you should think of that probably leans towards graft versus host as opposed to the other types of organ rejection. Complement system, most of these questions are gonna be on C5A, but you may also see questions on C3A or the MAC complex, but I wouldn't necessarily suggest memorizing the entire uh, cascade in detail. If you just know the functions of these key parts that I've mentioned, you can probably get by without memorizing that whole cascade. And you may want to look a little bit at complement deficiencies, but it doesn't show up nearly as much. We've got the cardinal signs of inflammation. So you want to be able to identify the clinical signs of inflammation and what signal molecules are involved in creating those clinical signs. Autoantibodies, you want to be able to use the laboratory results of some specific autoantibodies to help you make certain diagnoses. Uh, things like uh, rheumatoid factor, anti-double strand DNA, and anti-nuclear antibodies show up the most in questions. And when you do recognize those, it, it can be a big tip off to what the answer is. So. Uh, keep an eye out for those, but I wouldn't necessarily say drive yourself crazy trying to memorize, you know, dozens and dozens of these autoantibodies. Just try to pick out the handful of the ones that, that show up most commonly on tests. Now we're getting into some of the lower yield material, but this is stuff that's probably still worth studying because it is somewhat likely to show up on the exam. In a few slides, we'll get into the material that I suggest not studying, but here we're still in the range of stuff I would say you should look at. Uh, in the weeks leading up to your exam. So we've got X-linked A-gamma-globinemia. As with most of these uh, immunodeficiencies, you want to be able to identify the general picture of immunodeficiencies based on a clinical description. You want to know how this is specifically linked to a defect in Bruton tyrosine kinase, how they have low levels of all the immunoglobulins, and what types of infections these patients are most susceptible to. High yield rating of three, we've got differentiating between a transidate and an exudate. So you want to know the basic difference on how these fluids are formed, as well as how to differentiate between the two based on some basic lab results. Uh, for example, if you're looking at pleural fluid and trying to figure out if it's transidate or exudate, that may be able to help you figure out what caused the fluid buildup. So knowing a little bit about that uh, will be useful for some questions. Also with a high yield rating of three, severe combined immunodeficiency. So you wanna know how this is low T cells and low B cells with uh, low levels of immunoglobulins, how it has an absence of the thymus like DeGeorge. And again, being able to identify the general picture of somebody who might have some sort of immunodeficiency based on their clinical description. You know, they keep getting similar infections over and over again. High yield rating of three, Nutriville extravasation. I wouldn't go crazy here memorizing every single uh, step and every single surface molecule uh, in detail. Just a basic understanding of the different stages uh, that take place to get neutrophils and other white blood cells from the bloodstream into the inflamed tissue. And some of the key surface molecules that I point out in my videos is probably sufficient for these questions. Also with the high yield rating of three, we've got killed or inactivated vaccines. You want to know the basic definition, 
uh, types of immunity elicited with these vaccines, and then diseases that are commonly prevented with this type of vaccine. IL-1, interleukin-1, you want to know its role in acute inflammation and fever. Granulomas, uh, what's important is the types of cells involved in the formation of granulomas and their relationship to interferon gamma, uh, how to identify a granuloma in a picture, and diseases that often present with granulomas. High yield rating of two, myeloperoxidase deficiency. Uh, so you wanna know how it's a low level of the MPO enzyme and how uh, low levels of hydrochlorous acid prevent proper function of the phagocytes and how it can present clinically very similar to uh, chronic granulomatous disease. IgA deficiency, how it has low IgA but normal other immunoglobulins, how it has a increased susceptibility to mucosal infections, uh, but for the most part, you're gonna see a clinical presentation in the question where a completely asymptomatic person has an anaphylactic reaction following a blood transfusion. High yield rating of two, we've got the chemotactic factors, IL-8 and leukotriene B4. So you basically just wanna know how these can attract neutrophils. Acute organ transplant rejection. Again, the focus here is noticing the time course of the clinical presentation, but you'd also like to know that it's T cell mediated and that you can see a lymphocytic infiltrate of the tissue either on autopsy or biopsy. Type 2 hypersensitivity, you need to know uh, how the body's own antibodies attack the body's own cells. You won't get a ton of questions directly on type 2 hypersensitivity, but understanding type 2 hypersensitivity will lay the foundation for understanding things like uh, rheumatic fever and good pasture syndrome. High yield rating of 1, we've got differentiating between passive and active immunization. Uh, what the difference is and some common scenarios where you might use uh, passive and or active. Hyperacute organ transplant rejection. With this one in particular, the time course is very important, which is probably why you don't get a lot of questions on this because it's pretty easy to pick out. You know, you're still in surgery with the organ transplant. You're already having issues. Uh, you may also want to know that it's often a result of ABO incompatibility and happens so quickly because there are already preformed antibodies in the body uh, to help reject the organ. B and T cell development. You want to have a basic understanding of the organs where these cells develop during some different stages, as well as the processes like tolerance that take place during maturation. Antibody structure. A uh, basic understanding of you know the overall shape of antibodies and also which regions tend to play specific roles like interacting with other molecules. That brings us to the material I'm going to label as no yield or high yield rating of zero. Uh, if I were to put money on it, I'd say you're unlikely to see these questions on the exam, so I wouldn't suggest spending a lot of time studying these topics, uh, especially if you're in the last couple weeks leading up to the, your step one exam. But if you're still in your pathology course or immunology course, you definitely want to look at at least some of these topics because these will be high yield in other exams, just not necessarily in the USMLE step one exam. So I won't read these out, but if you want to look at them, you can just pause the video and take a look. Here's page one, then here's page two of the no yield material. So that brings us to the end of this video. I'd like to send a big thanks to Carlos and Yashui for going to stomponstep1.com and making a donation that helped bring this video to you all. If you found this video useful, please comment below as it really helps me out. The first video in the inflammation and immunology section will be covering adaptive immunity, innate immunity, cell mediated immunity, and tumoral immunity. You can click on this black box here to be taken directly to that video if you're watching on a computer. And if you're watching on a phone or a tablet, you can just go to my website or my YouTube channel and find the Inflammation and Immunology playlist. Thank you so much for watching and good luck with the rest of your studying.